What's up riders, my name's Chewy. Today we're gonna to be reviewing the Pinion gearbox specifically for use with mountain bikes. Let's check it out. Rightio guys, so let's get right into this gearbox review. Now this is a little bit of a different way of doing things than most people are used to. Most people are gonna be comparing this to a cassette and a derailleur, so let's get into the differences between that and the advantages and disadvantages of having this gearbox. First of all, let's get into the specs. The gearbox is a 12 speed gearbox. It does come in a nine and an 18 speed option, but we're specifically talking about the 12 speed. Now this is gonna be going head to head, obviously against your cassette. If you're thinking about changing over to something like a Zeroed or a Deviant, something that has a gearbox installed in a mountain bike already. Okay, there are some pros and cons with having a gearbox. Let's get into the specs first. This is a 12 speed gearbox. It has a 600% range. Now most 12 speeds cassettes are gonna be around 500, 520% range. If you're looking at a SRAM Eagle or the Shimano equivalent, that's gonna be your ranges. 600% is gonna be a bit more, so you're gonna get a little bit of an easier granny ring and a little bit of a taller gear as well. This 12-speed gearbox has a 17% increment between each gear and it's 17% throughout the range. So you're not going from say a 42 up to a 52 rear cog, it's gonna be 17% steps all the way from first to 12th gear. So let's get in a couple of the advantages of having a gearbox and why would you have a gearbox over a traditional cassette? The first thing you're gonna notice is it's totally sealed. Now that means it's completely void from being affected by any type of weather or dirt or grit or slime or water getting into the gearbox. It's completely sealed. You can actually submerge this gearbox underwater and not have anything get in. Unlike your cassette, which is totally exposed to the environment, anything you're gonna be riding through with a cassette is gonna be going directly into the cassette and the gears. So having it completely sealed is gonna be one huge plus for the longevity of this item. I've had mine for just over two years now, and I've actually transferred my old gearbox onto my new bike because it's working absolutely perfectly. Previously, I owned a 12-speed SRAM Eagle setup. Now, even after 12 months, I did notice a high amount of wear on that cassette and it also started to drop chains after just eight months of use, and that is without any sort of impact or crash damage. Now the weight, the gearbox system is a little bit heavier than the overall drivetrain compared to a cassette. Now the advantages of having all of your weight located inside your gearbox, you can reallocate the weight from your rear wheel and put it in your crank area. Now removing the weight from the rear wheel greatly increases your suspension performance. There's something called sprung versus unsprung mass ratios, which I won't get into too much today, but let's just say the more weight you can remove from your wheel and put it into the central drivetrain area down around your cranks, the better. Now, how do we shift this gearbox? It is a grip shift style shifter, which this is a little bit polarizing. A lot of people don't like the idea of a grip shift. Now, I can tell you why. When you first buy a bike that has a gearbox and you're using it for mountain bike use, it kind of goes like this. Now my process when I first bought this gearbox bike was the first three months of riding a gearbox, I absolutely hated how it shifted. I didn't like the grip shift system at all. I actually spent the first three months Googling different ways that I might be able to set up the shift to try and maybe run two sort of paddle style shifters which I've seen some pictures of on the internet. But what happens is after sort of three months, you start to begin to get used to it. And then you actually start getting good at shifting with the grip shift. There is a couple of disadvantages which I'll get to, but after a while, you do start to prefer the grip shift. Now, it is definitely something you have to stick with and practice and learn to do because it's kind of like a new way of shifting and you have to learn how to shift because with this gearbox, you actually can't shift while you are pedaling like what you can do with a cassette. Now, you are not actually supposed to load a cassette as you shift it because the chain line is jumping from cog to cog and it's very easy to break chains or bend teeth or damage your drivetrain if you're shifting under load, but a cassette actually can shift under load. Whereas a gearbox, it won't shift. If you are putting load on the pedals, you physically can't turn the grip shift, which is something you definitely have to get used to. Now, when you first do it, you will muck up your shifts all the time. You will get stuck on climbs but as you get better and better at riding this gearbox, you actually come to prefer this style of shifting. All you actually need to do when you get good at it is time a little bit of an unweight in the pedals and then shift at the same time. Now, if you haven't ridden this gearbox style before, you're probably not gonna know what I'm talking about, but trust me when I say you actually do get good at it. It's a little bit like the first time you ever ride a motocross bike. 
shifting with your feet and timing the clutch and the throttle, it's a little bit like riding this gearbox bike. You really kind of have to get good at timing the pedals as well as the shift. And I did find myself after I got good at it, actually preferring this type of shift and actually tending to shift more often and just putting in the correct gear for my cadence. Now, like I said, it is definitely something you have to stick with. Don't necessarily take the feeling you get from a first test ride as what it's gonna be like for the rest of the ownership of your bike. Now, when you first buy this gearbox, if you do buy it new, you will definitely notice a notchy feeling when you're shifting. It's a little bit like a brand new car. Everything needs to be worn in and run in, but it's definitely notchy and a little bit more difficult to shift, which actually compounds that problem what I just spoke about when you are going through that learning process of learning how to shift. So it's definitely a little bit notchy when you first get it, but it does wear in. I'm gonna say the wear in time is three to six months of heavy riding, but when it does wear in, everything glides together very, very beautifully, and that will carry on for the lifetime of the gearbox. Now, that is one huge bonus point as well, the lifetime of this gearbox. I have no idea how long these things last. I have ridden my bike flat out for almost two and a half years, and I'm still running the original sprockets and chain. That is how good this thing is, because it allows you to align your sprocket and chain perfectly in a nice straight line, so there's no twisting or bending of the chain, and that results in a far longer lifetime of your drivetrain. Now, a lot of people are concerned with the amount of drag that this gearbox has over a traditional cassette. I can tell you when it's new, it seems to have a little bit more drag than when it's worn in. Okay, so compared to a normal cassette, if you have it in one of the middle gears on the cassette, then there is a slight amount more drag on a gearbox than on a cassette. If you have your cassette shifted all the way to the easy gear or all the way to the hard gear and your chain line is not straight, then the gearbox has about that much drag. Okay, there's a, a little bit more than a normal cassette, but I wouldn't say it is an issue, and it's not really something that I think about, especially for a gravity oriented bike, like an enduro bike. Then the arguments, I'm gonna say it's really a non-starter. If maybe you're comparing it to a city bike, or maybe a flat out race cross country bike, then you might notice it a little bit more, but for something like an enduro or a downhill bike, that gearbox, the drag, you're probably not gonna notice it too much. Now getting back towards the grip shift, the grip shift I'm gonna say is not aesthetically pleasing compared to an underslung thumb style shifter on a normal cassette because the reason is you've got two cables coming out of the grip shift. Now, what I've done with my bicycle is reverse the direction of the shifting. So what that means is normally you will turn your wrist down to put it into an easier gear and twist it up to put it into a harder or a taller gear, which I find totally counterintuitive because I come from a motorcycle riding background, and if you wanna go fast on a motorcycle, what do you do? You twist it that way. So what I've done is reverse the shifting style, so clicking it down this way puts it into a harder gear, and clicking it up puts it into an easier gear. Now I find I made huge amount of mistakes when I first got on the bike because it was rotated around the other way and shifting harder was twisting up and I would always shift the wrong way when I first got on the bike and that was something I didn't want to get used to so I just swapped the cable routing around. Now, when you are installing the cables for the first time, if you're a professional bicycle mechanic and you do this all the time, it's probably gonna be quite easy. If you're Joe Bloggs like me and you do the installation yourself, then make sure you're in a good frame of mind or you have a good sense of humor because holy shit, is it frustrating. I lose my shit literally every time I have to freshen my cables up, which is probably once every 18 months. And every single time I seem to go through four inner cables trying to get the cable orientation the way I like it. And the instruction video on Pinion's website is a bit wishy-washy. It is literally just a step-by-step -step video of how to do it. It is very slow moving and there is no commentary during the video explanations. So there's no one telling you what not to do, and there is about a million things that you shouldn't do. It only shows you the correct way to do it, which if you're reversing your cables like me, is not relevant. So, like I said, before you do it, have plenty of spare inners and have a good sense of humor before you attempt this one. Make sure you've got plenty of time as well, because doing it correctly and nicely and neatly does take a bit of time. Now with this new C-Line gearbox, they've just introduced a new cable shifter, which orientates the cables a little bit more neatly and around underneath your brake. I have stuck with the old style shifter, even though it's a little bit uglier having the cables coming out the front, I can actually run a cut down push on grip all the way high up against the shifter. Whereas the new style shifter, you actually have to have a, a grip locking ring to secure it in place, which I find 
for a mountain bike is a terrible idea because I want the cushioning of a push-on grip all the way hard up against my grip shift. If you have that locking ring in the middle of your palm and you're up doing downhill runs or long steep enduro runs, then I'm sure that that locking ring is gonna be uncomfortable and you're gonna be able to feel where that Allen key is because you actually wrap your hand around that locking ring. So what I've done instead is run the old style shifter with the two ugly cables coming out the front and I've pushed a grip shift all the way up to the side of it. Now a pro tip if you're setting this up for enduro, what you should do is have the push on grip only as wide as three fingers and then you will actually always ride holding the shifter. One thing you don't wanna do is have a nice wide grip that you put your whole hand on and then have to reorientate your hand to change gears because that's gonna be a terrible idea if you have to let go every time you have to change gears. Run it so you've kinda of got one and a half fingers around the shifter and then two and a half fingers around your soft push on grip. Now there's advantages and disadvantages to using this pinion grip shift style of gearbox on the trail. One of the advantages I'm gonna start with is you do not have to pedal to get it to change to the next gear. All you have to do is twist and make it click and it's already in the next gear. So you can do this coasting or when you're completely stationary off the bike, let's just say you've done a big steep climb and you've had a rest with your mates and you're about to drop into a steep trailhead where you're gonna go very fast and you might wanna be in the top one or two gears. All you do is go and it's ready. You don't have to go click, click, click and then pedal and then click, click, click and then pedal and then click, 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 pedal. There is none of that. You just click and it's in the next gear. So when you are approaching a section where you might need another gear, all you do is coast, click and then you are ready to rock and roll. This is especially good if you know what's coming up or you know the trail and you're trying to do some time runs. You can plan ahead, click whenever you're not pedaling and it's already in the gear ready to go to power out of a corner or to power up a hill. Now that said, one of the disadvantages I find, and there's not many of them, when you are in a steep, tricky descent that has either a berm or a corner or a hill that you immediately need to pedal out of in a lower gear, if you want to shift to the next gear, that is when I find it a disadvantage because you want to have your hands and wrists locked into your downhill attack position. And if you weaken that wrist position by shifting, then it's probably gonna be quite easy to crash and roll that wrist forward, which you don't wanna be doing. So that is the only time that I find it a disadvantage, and it's only for very specific sections of trail. Most corners you won't have this problem, most descents you won't have this problem, but the odd one may have that tight pinch corner coming out of that long descent that you can't shift because you're in that attack position. So that is the only time I kind of find it a little bit of a disadvantage in the shifting. Otherwise, almost every other instance, I prefer to have that grip shift after I got good at it. Like I said, there is a learning period that you will not prefer it, but then it'll slowly transition into being a better system for you for the mountain biking. Now, another point that I've noticed does definitely concern a lot of people is this gearbox only has 20 points of engagement. You'll see it written as 20 POE, points of engagement. Now that means if you back pedal the cranks, you'll hear 20 clicks, click, 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 click. Now, a normal modern day hub will have anywhere between 60 to 180 points of engagement for a high end hub. That, that means when you turn the cranks, you'll hear a lot of clicks. Now, this is a disadvantage because when you re-engage the gearbox, the pedals will actually turn quite a few degrees before they re-engage. Now that said, the gearbox picks up where you left off. So if you don't back pedal, the gearbox takes off where it lets off. So it's actually instant. It's only when you come around a berm and you drop that inside foot backwards that you will need to re-engage it or if you're climbing up a steep technical section and you do that ratcheting crank to get you up that last section, that's when it becomes a little bit of a disadvantage. If you're trying to do that ratchet crank, that's when I find the gearbox a disadvantage. You can't really ratchet crank up those steep techie sections. You kind of have to keep the pedals turning on a gearbox to get it to climb. One little pro tip that I've found for running the gearbox is a brand called Onyx Racing Products has a hub that is instant engaging. Now it actually has a sprag clutch inside it which has no lag whatsoever. Now combining that Onyx instant engaging hub with a gearbox is a good way to limit how many points of engagement you have. 
If you've got a very cheap hub that only has say 36 points of engagement, and you pair that with your 20 points of engagement gearbox, then you're definitely gonna get a huge amount of lag. If you've got something like the Onyx Hub, like what I have on my bike, then you're gonna have a lot less lag and you're only gonna to have to deal with that as 20 points of engagement. Now I'm obviously talking about these Pinion C-Line gearbox. Previously, they had a Pinion P-Line. And the difference between the two is, the new C-Line gearbox has a magnesium casing. Now the magnesium is a little bit lighter than aluminium and the difference between the two gearboxes, I've found that the new magnesium one is a little bit noisier than the aluminium version. It sort of transfers that inner gearbox noise through the frame or out into the atmosphere a little bit more. Then you do notice that it's a little bit more noisy than the aluminium version. Now the noise from the gearbox is not great. You definitely kind of know that you have a gearbox, but it's not overwhelming and it's not annoying. You just always know that you've got a gearbox. Now also the difference between the C-Line and the P-Line is the P-Line had a much nicer gear cable cover and it was actually completely weather sealed apart from the little inputs for the two cables. It actually bolted on with three nice Allen keys and it was machined out of aluminium. Whereas the new P-Line gearbox has a shitty push on cover that is almost completely useless for mountain bike use because it actually lets water in and every time I take the cap off, it almost falls off in my hand and you can actually see where the dirt and the water has gotten in each time I've washed my bike. Now it's not a huge problem and it doesn't affect the overall performance of the gearbox and the shifting, but it is a suck compared to the old style which has a nice aluminium cap that you actually bolt on with Allen keys. And in my opinion, that cover is a huge reduction in quality to the, the previous model's gearbox. Now the price point for the gearbox is around a thousand euros. It kind of puts you in the price point of a SRAM Eagle drivetrain, which is what you're gonna kind of be used to or comparing this against. But the thing is with the gearbox, like I said, I've had mine for over two years and it is literally perfect. I actually preferred to keep my old gearbox rather than go through the run-in process of a new one. Whereas with my SRAM Eagle, I was experiencing a substantial amount of wear after just eight months. Now, for the similar sort of purchase price, it's gonna be a no-brainer. And whenever I get back on a traditional style mountain bike with the cassette and normal shifters, I kind of wonder how on earth did I ever ride those old cassette style systems. Gearboxes are definitely the future. There is definitely a big learning curve when you first get on it, but it's something you should definitely stick with. After you cross that learning curve of about three months of riding it and getting good at it and used to it, you will absolutely wonder how on earth did you ride those old cassette style bikes with those clunky derailers following you down the hill. I don't care how good the clutch technology is, they are still horrible compared to riding a bike with a gearbox, especially when you're getting it over those long successive hits your suspension is able to follow the trail beautifully. You do not get one ounce of clunk or knocking from the derailleur or the back end on the gearbox bike. It is beautifully quiet. If you enjoy riding a bike with perfect suspension, a gearbox bike is definitely gonna be for you. So can I recommend a gearbox for purchase? Absolutely. I realize that I'm a little bit biased because I've been riding this system for two years, but I just think that makes me extra qualified to recommend it to you. Go and get a gearbox. Don't just try it in the car park or don't just do one test ride and make up your mind from there. Make up your mind based on how the suspension feels and that is the level of enlightenment that you might be able to reach later on if you do buy a bike with a gearbox. If you did enjoy the video, don't forget to like and subscribe and share this one with your friends. Phew, right on guys.